I finished playing Rage the first game in the wee hours of this morning, and Rage 2 will be released in about five hours as of this recording. And so I'm sure some of you are thinking about getting it, it does look good, but perhaps you're, you're thinking, you know what, maybe I should play Rage 1 first. Do I have to? Is it worth it? And I can tell you, people are saying you don't have to play the first one to enjoy the second one, so you could just jump into Rage 2, but having played the first one, I actually kind of enjoyed it and would definitely recommend it. It's pretty cheap, it's about $10 right now. It won't take long to play. I mean, probably one of the major criticisms of the game is it is a little too short. It's probably about half the length that it should be. I get the feeling that had it been twice as long, it would have felt like a more complete game. But as I said, it's only $10 and perhaps the, the fact that you can speed through it quickly will actually work in your favor if you're looking forward to getting to Rage 2 and you just want a little bit more of the uh, background before you go in. Because essentially that was the biggest reason I decided to play it. Now it is fun, as I said, um, if, if you're an FPS game, Gamer, this game will feel very familiar to you. Um, however, as you can probably tell from the tone and the lead up here, it's not without its flaws. In fact, it has quite a few of them. And the biggest problem I had with this game is it didn't seem to know what it wanted to be. You know, if you look at the id software typical game like Doom, it's a no-nonsense, in-your-face, run around like a maniac with various weapons, killing demons galore. There is a story, but it's pretty incidental. There's no trading or crafting. There's no, you don't pick up quests from people or talk to them or anything like that. You just run around and it's non-stop mayhem. And then you've got some FPS games that are very narrative driven, like uh, Metro, or you've got ones that are somewhere in between, like Borderlands. And Rage felt like it was kind of going for something like Borderlands, but it, it couldn't quite manage it. It didn't have the same level of humour. But this also meant that it felt like the combat was a little stilted. It just wasn't as fluid. There was not the same verticality or um, sort of instinctive movement that you get in Doom. So, for example, I'd see things that looked like I should be able to jump over them or vault them, and you couldn't. I tried, I'd hide behind a wall to take cover, but there's no cover mechanic. And all of the things that you sort of semi-expect from different types of games. If you're playing a tactical FPS game, you expect a cover mechanic. If you're playing something that's a bit more Doom-based, you expect to be able to jump onto a table and then jump off a table and while still shooting your shotgun into someone's head. This game kind of, you know, I'd, I'd bounce around, jump sideways thinking I'm gonna jump onto the table and I'd just get stopped. But it wasn't even just tables. I could get stopped by the smallest bit of rubble. There's a lot of invisible wall in this uh, in this game, and it it makes it feel a little restrictive, you know, unlike Doom. So it's very linear as well. You are going to be almost on rails around the maps. Now, a lot of FPS games are quite linear, but they hide that fact from you. This game does not. It's so brutally in your face there's you know or you you're going through corridors where there's one way in one way out uh, there may be some side rooms but they're all closed off or you're in an area and there's conveniently placed rubble everywhere and sometimes it doesn't even look like it's rubble that should stop you and yet it does so that you know there's there is this feeling that the game doesn't quite know what it's trying to be and this feeling is reinforced for me when I see trailers of Rage 2 and the gameplay footage for, for Rage 2, because Rage 2 looks like it's embraced its more id software roots and, you know, it's going full on massive fluid combat with tons of verticality. I'm, I'm really, really excited for Rage 2 because it looks like they've just accepted what was best about Rage was the insane violence. The fact that you could, you could kill all your enemies with a variety of weapons. You could, you could throw grenades at them. You could hit them in the face with these cool wing sticks. You know, there, there was, there, it was, it was a game that should have been about the action and not a lot else. Now, I don't know if Rage 2's got all the quests and the, you know, the, the crafting. It probably does. 
but the combat looks like they've really nailed it. Rage, they haven't quite nailed it. However, having said that, it's still a ton of fun. And the, the, the firefights were actually enjoyable. I played on Nightmare Difficulty, which, you know, it's a very bullet spongy game. Very bullet spongy indeed. And Nightmare Difficulty does make all the enemies pretty much auto-aim. They can hide behind walls, stick their hand around and nothing but their hand, and just shoot with a pistol and constantly hit you, uh, which is mildly irritating. Um... And this means you do have to take cover, even though there's no cover mechanic. And you do have to pick off a few enemies before you run in there with your shotgun and just take the remaining couple out. Because, you know, you can only take a small amount of damage before you're down. So you have to play it a little bit more sensibly than you might play Doom at the same difficulty. But overall, it's actually kind of fun. It's, it is a little, it's a little tongue-in-cheek, hilarious, over-the-top type violence. As I said, my, my, my main criticism is it, it just didn't quite nail it. It is a short game, though. It is a cheap game. And I did find myself enjoying it pretty much all the way through with these minor frustrations. So, if, you, if you're thinking of playing Rage 2 and you want to get some background on what is going on, at the same time as find fairly amusing ways of killing enemies and driving some insane vehicles around and crashing into things and blowing stuff up, it's actually worth it. I, I actually say, yeah, for I think it's $10, it's worth $10. And it's worth playing just, just to get the backstory, but also because it is still fun. Flaws and all, it's still fun. And that's what games are about, right? Having some fun. So, there you go. Like I said, not a thorough review. Probably missed a lot of different things. Um, I just wanted to quickly let you know that I'd finished the game and actually really did enjoy it in spite of its flaws. And now I'm just eagerly awaiting Rage 2. I've had my eye on that game for such a long time. I say such a long time. Since last year. Um, I make it sound like it's been like years in the waiting. I'm a bit, I am. I'm really excited for that game. And um, so that's it. So there you go. Rage 1, definitely worth a play. Rage 2, I'll tell you how I feel once it's out and I play it. From what I can see, I have high hopes.